A law enforcement video is long overdue. So here's a Q&A of the top five questions that I've been asked recently. So I recently went live on my Instagram and asked a lot of my followers the top five questions that they had. So that's what we're going to be answering today and it's going to be short and sweet but to give you guys some answers to law enforcement questions that you had. The first one was what kind of training do you find beneficial to help your career? So I actually have like some mixed feelings about this because um, there are two sides of what I find beneficial for your career. Um, if you plan on staying in law enforcement until retirement, um, I definitely suggest that you take training that is relevant to the area of law enforcement that you enjoy the most. So if you like doing traffic, um, go to traffic trainings, um, how to search a vehicle, tactical approaches, all kinds of stuff related to traffic that'll help you in your career and to help you be very good at what it is that you like. There is also the other side of the career where if you want to do something outside of law enforcement, then you should definitely take trainings and take advantage of what the department can pay for or will offer you that will be beneficial outside of law enforcement. And that can be like polygraph or um, anything that's traffic related really because you can get an insurance job outside of there. So that question definitely has some mixed feelings. So the next question is the hardest part of law enforcement for women. I actually like to approach this question in a more tactical way because I don't want women to think that being in law enforcement is automatically uh, something that is not good for a woman or that makes it hard for a woman. Um, yes, there are hard things that we face as women in law enforcement, but it's not everything and there are some advantages that we can provide law enforcement being that we're women, just the way our brain works, the way we see things. Um, it, it, it gives a different dynamic and perspective to law enforcement in general. Um, I will say the hardest part for me as a woman in law enforcement was during the promotional process. I worked very, very hard to get that promotion and I feel like I deserved it and I had a handful of people who also felt the same way. But on the flip side, I had a lot of people who did not feel that way. And there are machismos, as we would say in the Hispanic culture, that do not like taking authority from women. And you have a handful of those too. So um, what I faced was uh, the rumors and what, oh, what did she do to get promoted? And sometimes it doesn't matter what your work ethic is. It doesn't matter what you've done to get where you're at. You're always going to have the negative side of people who want to use your gender as a reason why you got somewhere in your career. Then you also have the part of proving yourself. And that is not limited to just being a female in law enforcement. That's actually for males and females. When you first get in to the field training um, process of getting in the field and learning how to do the job, there is going to be a number of times that you're going to be tested on whether or not you're capable of doing the job. You jumping into a fight or chasing after someone or knowing that somebody has a weapon and how you're going to approach that in a tactical way. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of things that you learn during the FTO process that you have to prove yourself and that's man or woman. But I do feel like the pressure is there for women a little more than the men just because we as women feel like I have to show them that I can do this and that I'm capable of doing this uh, just because we already as ourselves think that we need to do that. So I don't think that that's a perception that um, is really there 100%. I do think it exists, but I think it exists more in us than it does on the outside because that perception of whether they can do the job or not is both men and women. You have to prove yourself no matter what gender you are or who you are. That is just something that comes with the job and that's part of the FTO process. So yes, there is some difficulties being a woman, uh, woman in law enforcement, but overall, I don't think that it's impossible or anything that you need to fear if you decide to join law enforcement. So the next question is, what is the most rewarding part of law enforcement and my fondest memory? Uh, the most rewarding part was the friendships that I made. Um, I was very, very selective on people that I made friends with and the friends that I did make and lost over time, um, they're 
there's a reason why. I mean, there's a reason why they're not in my life and vice versa. And I feel very comfortable with the people that I do have in my life out of those friendships that I made. They become family. And if you are familiar with the military at all, it's very similar. Um, you know, you're out there working the streets with these people and they make sure you get home at the end of the night and you make sure that they get home at the end of the night. So um, overall, there's just a camaraderie that you can't, uh, compared to other jobs that are not similar to military law enforcement first responders. Uh, I feel like that's the most rewarding and also um, there are some cases that I worked you know that worked out very well and the ending result was somebody had a better life after um, having interacted with me whether they be the offender or the victim or somebody who just called and I made contact with like those are the ones that I feel were most rewarding for me throughout my career. Uh, my fondest memory is probably going to be uh, when I was a sergeant and seeing one of my guys deal with a domestic case that was actually a very difficult case. It was a case that had shown on ongoing long-term abuse and the situation he responded to um, was very unique and there was a way that he may not have been able to help this female but the way he talked to this person and the information he was able to get the way he handled himself he learned all that you know he was a relatively newer officer and he learned so much and it was a proud moment for me and i know that doesn't seem like um your most common fondest memory but there was just something that i felt gratitude in in seeing my shift go out there and be successful and do things good there was just this feeling that i had that i i loved i loved seeing them do good and so i'm gonna say that was my fondest memory because he ended up going to federal court on that case and i'm not sure what turned out of it but he went to it through the end and ultimately um that female had peace of mind that this officer did their job and pretty much saved her life so i'll say that seeing the success in others brought me a lot of joy all right so the next question is um have i ever been tor torn between policy and ethics and if I was how did I handle it um, yes there was several times that I was torn between this and um, I think one of the reasons why I felt that I could have made a change in the department was because I was very vocal and unfortunately that's not something that is um, something that's really tolerated in many departments people don't like people who stir things up and i understand that and being somebody that was a supervisor uh, the way i handled situations that i was torn between policy and the ethical side of things was going above you know talking to the people who were in charge the captains the lieutenants the chief of police um, now regardless of whether the issue was resolved the way I thought it should have been resolved it came few and far you know but I had to speak up and I had to say something and ultimately I work for the city and the department and it's not my department and it's not my city so even if I didn't like what the policy said or the ethical side of things that they contradicted each other I still had a job to do and that is probably one of the hardest things that you will face in law enforcement is that sometimes no matter how bad you feel like hey I don't want to enforce this law depending on the situation you have a job to do all right so the next question is gonna be the hardest part of being a female sergeant which I already kind of touched base on being a female in law enforcement in general but as a female sergeant um, I did have my run-in with a few officers that were not okay with number one taking orders from a female and number two the experience that i had wasn't as um many years as they were so uh of course with that came the rumors like what did she do how did she get that position and there was an officer who was very vocal about how he felt um about my promotion and how he felt that i was only promoted because i was a female and it was everybody knew everybody knew how he felt including um, higher-ups and nothing was ever really addressed 
um, on that and so I had to deal with that and I had to I, I felt like I shouldn't have to defend myself against that because I knew my work spoke for itself but you know nobody stood up for me either so I feel like those are little things that as a sergeant that you face as a female and unfortunately that's just the way it is in law enforcement I hope that things change over time because maybe not everybody feels that way um, and maybe there's other female sergeants who didn't experience what I did but um, I stood up for myself and I definitely put my foot down regardless of what anybody may have thought or you know I wasn't there to change anybody's mind I was there to do a job and that's exactly how I went about my job so and with that being said um, the thing that I took most pride in was to be consistent and to be fair and to be understanding and to want to be a good leader. I think that was my main goal. It wasn't about being the best sergeant than everyone else or competing with everyone else. I truly wanted to see my shift grow. So I think the mentality that I had was different than other sergeants and we didn't always see eye to eye. Um, at some point during my career as a sergeant, I did kind of shut down because I felt like I was always alone in the ideas that I had, but you know, that, that wasn't very often. And sometimes I would just be like, screw it. I'm gonna go after this anyways, regardless of who's on my side or not. So um, yeah, being, being a female sergeant has its pros and its cons, but ultimately I just think it's the perspective that you have when you're doing the job that's really gonna matter if you allow things to get to you and think every single time it's because I'm a female. So you have to change that perspective in order to be happy and successful in the position that you hold. All right, so the last question is how to decompress from shift. Um, I think that this one is more of a general question because I can't give you a direct answer that's gonna work for everyone. Um, I can give you some advice. There is the gym, there is vacation, going out of town, shopping, sleeping, uh, spending time with your family, going to the movies, going out to eat. There are a lot of things that you can do to decompress, um, but what I will say is make sure when you decompress, you do it in a healthy way. It's not a way to mask what you're feeling. So if you've gone through something on shift that you feel you need to decompress from and it is really on your mind, you need to find somebody that you're comfortable talking to and releasing that versus going to the gym and trying to hide behind it by building muscle and working out your hardest because even though you're releasing that stress, you're not really releasing the feeling. And um, I feel like that's where I'm a huge advocate on mental health is because um, we do these things to decompress, but are we doing it the right way? Are we doing it in a healthy way? So my suggestion on decompressing after shift is making sure you know what brings you happiness and if there is something that is bothering you, you have your person to talk to. My person was my husband. I told him everything even though he didn't understand most of it and that's not good for every relationship to tell your spouse. So make sure you just know who it is that you can go to if you need to talk to someone. So those were the top five questions for my Instagram live that I answered today. Um, I do want to kind of give you guys a heads up that my YouTube was made. I made my YouTube to distribute law enforcement related content along with my travel content and moving abroad and kind of just document my journey and the process that I've done. I know I've kind of slacked on it. In fact, I have so many videos that I haven't even made like from our trip to Italy, our trip to uh, Switzerland and all of the places that we went to this summer, including Bangkok. I have some footage that I haven't even shared with you guys, but I didn't want to make my page only travel related. So I do have to throw these out there from time to time and I want to get more into law enforcement related content because a lot of my subscribers and my followers um, are that they're law, either law enforcement related or they're law enforcement supporters or they're law enforcement haters and they want to know what we're doing and why we do what we do. I am completely open to all of your questions so uh, please look forward to more of these question and answers and also I'll be releasing some more law enforcement related content on how to get into law enforcement or how to get through the academy or even just how to get through the FTO process. So you guys keep an eye out for that. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and check out my other videos. I promise you'll enjoy it. And I will be back with more law enforcement related content, hopefully in the next few weeks.